Hello everyone, welcome to Coding Decoded. My name is Sanjay today. I am working as technical architect SD4 at Adobe and here I present weekly contest 303. The problem that I have chosen is equal row and column pair. It's a medium level question on lead code and in case if you are interested in more solutions of the contest, all of them are specified in the description below. So do check them out. However, for now, let's focus our attention on to 2352. Here in this question, we are given a matrix and we need to identify the number of pairs of a row and a column such that all the elements in that row is equal to that of column. For example, here this is, we are given a matrix and if you see that uh, there are one matching case which is 277. So this is the third row and if you carefully observe then it has the same element as the second column 277. As a result of which we identified one such pair the answer becomes 1. Here we are given another matrix and here the count turns out to be 3. How? Let's try and understand that up. The first row that matches is 2422, 2422 with this one, 2422. Again, we have a duplication 2422 matches with this one, 2422. So far we have identified two such combinations and the third one is 3122, the first row and the first column, 3122. As a result of which the answer becomes 3. Now comes the question how to solve this up. Let's quickly walk through the code, uh, walk through the presentation section where I'll be explaining the algorithm in detail. So let's get started. Equal row and column pairs lead code 2352. As I told it's a medium level question. And in case if you have any doubt understanding this question or if you want to ask anything from me in general, please feel free to drop a message on our telegram group or the discord server of coding decoded. Both the links are stated below. Now let's focus our attention onto the example. Here we have the matrix 3211762777. So what we can do, we can create two sets. The first set will contain the hashes for all the rows that we have in this matrix. So the first row is 3, 2, 1. So this set would, would store the hash for the first row, which would be something like this. 3 underscore 2 underscore 1. And if you carefully observe, then the order is also preserved in which the elements occur in this row. The second hash would be 1 underscore 7 underscore 6. And you can use any other element apart from underscore to create the hash. And the third one would be 2 underscore 7 underscore 7. So this is the row set that we have created. And here uh, each element would be a hash for the corresponding row that exists in our matrix. Now let's do the same kind of thing for the columns as well. The first hash entry would be 3, 1, 2. So let's en enter that up 3 underscore 1 underscore 2. The next would be 277 and the third one would be 167 so 1 underscore 6 underscore 7 now what we can do we can simply iterate over uh, the entries that are present in our row set and check whether each of this entry is part of our column set or not so let's do that so the first entry is 321 is it part of the column set no it's not part of the column set let's skip it up Next is 176. Is 176 part of this column set? No, it is not. So let's skip this up. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see 277. Is it part of the column set? Yes, it is part of the column set. And since we found a matching case, here the answer turns out to be 1. And this is what we need to return as well. However, there is a catch. We will have to store the frequency of each hash in column set as well as row set. Why I am saying this? Let's try and understand it by an example. So here we have the matrix as 13, 13, 13, 13. So let's try and check out how what will be the appropriate answer for this. So the first matching case would be this column matches with this particular row. So we found first entry. The second one would be again the same column matching with the second row. So the total count becomes two. Similarly, if we match this particular column with the first row, the count becomes three. And again, this column again matches with the second row, the count becomes 4. So the answer corresponding to entire matrix should be 4. Now what we will be doing, we will again be creating a, a similar kind of hash for each row and column. However, this time we will not go for sets, rather we will go for maps. So the, the key of that map would be of type string, which will actually store the hash and the uh, value would be the frequency so let's do that so the first hash would that would be created for the first row would be 13 underscore 13 
and this entry goes in our row hash row row map and the value would be 1 as we proceed ahead again we see there's a matching case the row already exists and the frequency gets updated to 2 so this is we are done with the creation of row map now we will do it for the column map as well so the first column is 13 underscore 13 and the frequency gets updated to 1 and by iterating over the second column the frequency gets updated to 2 now we have iterated over the matrix one in column fashion otherwise other, otherwise in row fashion and we are done with the first step now what we will be doing will be iterating over this map row map and we will check for each hash value whether that is part of the column map or not so in case it is part of the column map we will extract both these frequencies up uh, the one from the row map and the other one for the column map and we will multiply these two and add it to our result so let's do that here what entry corresponds to 13 underscore 13 two correspond to 13 underscore 13 the same entry does exist in my column map and what is the value there again it's 2 so we multiply these two up and we get 4 and 4 gets added to our global variable for storing the answer and it gets updated to 4 we are done with the iteration there could be more cases coming up but for the sake of simplicity i have kept it very uh, small and uh, this is what we need to return and the answer becomes 4 i'll be following the same steps as i have just talked here so let's quickly hop onto the presentation uh, coding section and conclude it up as i told i have created a map wherein the key is a string of type string and value is a integer i call it row hash and other one i keep it as column hash i iterate over the grid in row wise fashion i create the hash and i put it in my uh, row hash map Sim the similar kind of thing i do it for the column hash as well and now i iterate over all the entries that exist in my row hash i check whether the string value out that i extracted from the row hash is contained within the column hash map or not if it is contained then what do i do i extract both these values up one from the row hash other one from the column hash and i add it to the result and let's try this out accepted uh, the time complexity of this approach is order of m into n I hope you enjoyed the session. If you did, then please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead, and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. But till then, goodbye.